Hey, what's going on? Welcome to this video where I'm going to show you how to make responsive columns in CSS using Flexbox. So let's get into it. All right, so here we are inside CodePen, which we're going to use just to do some quick front end work here. And the first thing I'm going to do is change the background color because this white is blinding. So let's do body and then we'll say background 141414 to give it a nice dark gray. And I'm going to increase the font size as well. So I'll say font size 22 pixels, not PM, pixels. Line height, I'll say 1.5. And then the color of the font, since we have a dark background, should be something light. Let's do white. All right, now let's start writing some HTML. So I'll expand this here. And the very first thing I want to do is create a wrapper div, just to have some overall padding around our whole page. So I'll say div.wrapper and press tab. That will expand that HTML for me. And here I'll just paste some text just so we have something in here for now. And now let's add some padding here on this wrapper div. So we'll say wrapper padding 30 pixels, 30 pixels. And I'll do 300 on the bottom just because I want to be able to scroll past it a little bit. And there we go. Our content is padded out a little from the top and sides. So now let's write some HTML for the columns themselves. I'm just going to make a little space here and I'll type div.columns. And this will be the parent for all of the columns. So inside of this, we'll create each column. So let's create a 50% width column first. So we'll say div.call and then call 50. So we're going to use this class name for styles that apply to all columns. And then we're going to use this to specifically set the width to 50% for this column. Because then we can create others like call 25 for 25% width or call 100 for 100% width etc. So we'll do 50 for now and we'll just paste this content in here and we can remove it from down here. Let's go ahead and create one more of these. So we have two 50% width columns and let's style them up. So we'll expand this and the first thing we have to do is add display flex to the parent. So that is the columns div right here. So we'll say columns display flex. And you can see it actually made them about 50% with each at the moment, but that's because the content in each column right now is identical. But let's go ahead and style the columns. So we'll say all columns should have these styles. So let's start off by giving it a background color just so we can see what's going on a little better here. So we'll say background RGBA. And we'll just give it a transparent white here. Okay, so you see they're kind of blending into each other. So let's actually make them have some margin around them, a little gutter in between them to start with. We'll say margin, 0, 15 pixels, and we'll say 30 on the bottom. So what I want to do is create an even 30 pixel margin or gutter between all the columns, on the edges of all the columns, and below each column. And this did the trick. So we have 30 pixels in between them. We should have 30 pixels on the bottom. And we have 30 pixels on the top from the padding of the wrapper here. But you see, we actually have 45 pixels on the edges because our 15 pixel margin on the edge of each column is adding to the 30 pixel padding over here. So this is a pretty common thing that we run into when we're creating columns with gutters. So what we can do is compensate for the 15 pixel edge margin on each column using a negative margin on the parent. So we'll say margin zero for the top and bottom and then minus 15 for the edges and watch what happens here. There you go. Now we have a perfect 30 pixels on the left, on the right, and in the center. Because what we're doing is we're taking the overall Flexbox container and just bumping it out a little bit on each side using negative margin. So let's go ahead and add some padding inside these containers. Just for aesthetics. And why don't we add a little border radius as well. Just for the heck of it. So as you can see, we didn't specify that call 50 should be 50% width. It's just doing that automatically because the content in each one is identical. If we were to have a smaller amount of content in the first one, let's see what happens. So there's less content in the first column and more in the second column. So Flexbox automatically will make that one a little smaller and this one a little wider. But we don't want that. We want exact width columns, 50%, 50%. Or if we say 25%, we want it to always be 25%. So let's go ahead and fix that. So we'll create a new style for call 50 and we'll say that this should be 
50% wide, right? And let's see what happens. And there you go. Now call 50 will always be 50% width. So I'm just going to put this text back in here. And let's create a responsive style here. So if we get really small, this starts to look a little crazy. So we'll add a media query here. So at media screen. And we're going to specify a width. So we'll say max width, let's say 800. So once this screen's max width is 800 pixels wide, apply these styles. So we'll say call 50 should just become 100% wide at that point. Let's see what happens. And nothing happens. That's because Flexbox doesn't know we want these to be able to wrap underneath each other because by default, Flexbox items will not wrap. So let's go up here in our columns div and let's say flex wrap wrap. And that means that when possible, it'll let the items wrap underneath each other. And there you can see, we now have 100% width on these once we get to a certain screen size. And if we go back up, you can see we have another issue here, which is these are still wrapping for some reason. And that's because our call 50 columns are 50% 50 width, but we actually have more than that. We have 15 pixels of margin on either side. So these are not just 50% wide, they're actually 50% plus 30 pixels between the 15 pixels on either side. So that makes them wrap now because we've allowed wrapping. So we need to say that these are 50% wide minus the margin. So let's go right down here and we can just use CSS's calc function. So 50% minus 30 pixels. And that almost fixes it. But if you remember, we also added padding on the inside. So that also increases the width of these containers. CSS can be a pain in the butt, but once you start to understand margin, paddings, and widths, all of this starts to make a little more sense. So we had a margin on either side that added to the width, and we have a padding on the inside that is adding to the width. But we can tell CSS not to count the padding as width. And we can do that by saying box sizing border box. So this will prevent the padding from adding to the width. And there you go, we fixed that problem. So now we have two columns which are perfectly 50% each with a perfect gutter of 30 pixels on the edges, in the middle and on the bottoms and top. And if we go smaller, they will break down into full width. And they retain the exact same gutters in between and on the edges and all that. So as you can see, there's a few things that can make your Flexbox columns not work as you expected, but the fixes are fairly simple. One of them is a box sizing border box. And I add this to every project for every element because I never want the padding to add to the width of elements. And the other is accounting for the margin on the edges of elements when you're setting their width. Either way, that's two 50% columns. Let's add some other types of columns. Let's add a full width one at the top. So we'll say call 100. And let's add a style for this. We'll say call 100 is, again, we'll use calc. We want it to be 100% wide minus the margin on either side and this 15 pixels margin on either side. So minus 30 total margin. And there you go. And as we get smaller, that doesn't have to change at all because it's already 100% wide. So it can just remain 100% wide as we go down to mobile. Let's add one for thirds. So we'll just add the style here first. So call 33 will be 33.33%. Uh, we could just do 33%, but that would be off by a little bit. So let's do 33.33 to be one third of the overall container. And let's add three of these for three columns down below. So call 33. Let's make this a little less text maybe something like this. And we'll add two more. And there you go. We have thirds right here. We didn't have to do much extra stuff. We just added one new style for thirds. And if we go down to a mobile size screen, this gets to look a little crazy as well. So let's fix that as well. So once we get down to 800 pixels wide, we're changing the 50% width to 100%. Let's do the same for thirds. So call 33, we'll go to 100% at that mobile size. 
and there you go. So 150 thirds. Once they go to this, they all break down into full width. Now let's just add one more for 25% width. I'm sure you get the idea, but we'll just do this last one. So we'll add this here called 25. Let's really shorten the text on this one because it's a pretty small container at this point. And add four of them. And there you go. We now have quarter columns. And once again, once we get down to a mobile size screen, let's make them be 100% width. Call 25, 100% width. Actually, this should be calc. 100% minus 30 pixels, because we still do have those margins on the edges, even on mobile. So let's just do that. So that's great. Uh, one thing we can do, though, is once we get to maybe here, these start to get a bit squished. So let's add a new media query for just the 25% widths. And we'll say once we get to maybe uh, 1000 pixels wide, Let's make these be 50% width. So we have 25% width, and then they go out to 50% width, and then eventually they break down to 100% width. And there you go, that's responsive columns in CSS using Flexbox. Really, you just have to make sure you understand what's going on with margins and paddings as it relates to the width of each column. But once you understand that and you can account for it properly, it's pretty simple. All right, that's all for this video. I hope it was helpful. If you do want to see more CSS related videos, then let me know. Otherwise, subscribe for more Python, Flask, Postgres, web app development, and general videos. And I'll see you in the next one.